Oh my god, she's killed him! <laughs> Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Dan, aka Lucid, and today... Oh my god, today we are reacting to Evermore by Taylor Swift. Her second surprise album of the year, what the hell. Let's go. So, can we just take a moment, please? I was, like, all ready to not get another new Taylor Swift album. Um, I mean, we get the re-recordings, right? And then I was ready to not have another new one for, you know, years. What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, I was not ready for this. <sighs> Did not see this coming. But here we are, today. We're going to react. I've got coffee. Because it's morning. I've got cereal. Yeah, what can I say? Jesus. Jesus. Before we get started, quickly, uh, uh, remember to subscribe to the channel and remember to like this video if you like it. And of course, I know that you're good at this. I know you love this. Please leave a comment in the in the comment section below because we're going to have to get into the weeds once more about what this all means, about what every song means. I'm so excited to have brand new Taylor Swift music to dig into. If you're new here, hello, welcome. <laughs> if you haven't checked out any of my previous videos, um, I actually basically discovered Taylor Swift with Folklore. Obviously I'd heard her a lot before on the radio and whatever, but it wasn't until Folklore and I did the reaction that I was really kind of got it, you know? And since then I've done basically like a new reaction each month and I've gone back and I've done Red, Fearless, Speak Now, 1989. Honestly, I've been on such a journey. <laughs> I've loved it. So yeah, if you want to check out those previous reactions, if you haven't already, then click on the box in the corner. One more thing, make sure to watch to the end of the video because I'm doing this new segment called Song of the Week, where I give you like a song recommendation of the week. I mean, this recommendation should probably be Taylor Swift, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> so make sure to stick right to the end of the video to check out what my song recommendation of the week is. Let's get into this. Yay! I'm so excited, man. Oh, damn. Okay, so. This is track number one, this is Willow, and this is, I think it's a single. I'll have to watch the music video later. Oh my god. Already, oh my god. Oh, listen to, oh my god, how beautiful. And the water when your shit rolled in that night, huh, okay. Lost in your current. Oh my god. <gasps> oh, Joe. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god, what beautiful imagery. Oh my god. It really follows with the vibe of folklore, doesn't it? You know, with these kind of finger-picked acoustic guitars. It's very complex, but very simple at the same time. Begging for you to take my hands, wreck my plans, that's my man. It's like taking off in a direction that she never expected. Oh, they count me out time and time again. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> oh. Go back through your old heartaches. It all came together to make this, you know? It's like following on from the idea of, of the invisible string, I think. I just love... Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I just love the, the string, the, um, the guitar. It's just so beautiful. My train can take you home anywhere else is hollow. This is the real thing. I'm taking you there. You're taking me there. Oh. This is so nice. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so... So the willow was representing her love for Joe. My love for you bent like a willow. It's 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 like saying I met you and and you were this wind. You were the ship that came in. You were something that 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 changed all my plans. And I cha and I changed. It's almost like I kind of changed for you, but not in like a negative. I've lost myself, but in I've grown like a willow, like a flower. I've grown differently to match you and to match the way that you live and and like. And sometimes life goes that way and you meet somebody and they change everything for you and... <sighs> but like the imagery of the willow like makes so much more, it like makes so much sense because it's all like part of that kind of, that kind of imagery, you know, that, that's continuing on from folklore, you know, the kind of, the, um, 
like in the lakes where she where she watches the wisteria grow right over her feet it's that kind of that idea of like um trees that are hundreds and thousands of years old they have so much history it's like it's all part of the aesthetic it's all part of the storytelling lovely oh and that the guitar is just so beautiful right so let's go on to the second song song number two this is champagne problems wait back in august katy perry released her new album, Smile, and on there was a song called Champagne Problems. Is this going to be the Katy Perry song? <laughs> Just saying. Maybe they planned it in advance. Oh my God. Because we know that she's like, you know, had that whole thing and now she's like forgiven her and all that. It's like, you know, all in the, in the kind of the thing of growth and like moving on and everything that Folklore stood for. Um, maybe um, this is the Katy Perry song to follow on from that. Let's go. Oh, I love when you can hear like the foot pedal in a piano. It's like really intimate. I can't tell whether the birds are on the track or in <laughs> real life. <laughs> oh, I left your hand while we were dancing. Oh, so she broke someone else's heart or a friend or I guess. I guess, oh, well, I guess this, this might be another story, you know, your mum was phoning you, another teenage story. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they don't really get it. Oh, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so it sounds like, like, she's done something to hurt a friend, but nobody really understands. Maybe it's about college people. Oh. Oh, I'm getting chills. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe it is romance. Maybe this is James's perspective again. Oh, that's changed. That's changed. And now the mum's picture's in the pocket instead of hers. And you won't remember me. Oh. Oh my god, just that little like piano thing at the end, like, how like, oh, she did it again, the TT, okay, okay, here we are, hashtag TTT, <laughs> the typical Taylor twist, once again, that's so that heartbreaking, that like little moment where she's like, you know, like, now, like, she's like, it was, my picture's in your wallet, and we had this thing, and now, and then later on when she repeats the lyric, it's, you know, her picture in your, in your wallet, you won't remember all of my champagne problems. It's kind of like at this, it's kind of like, like building it up to be like this thing that's like huge, huge drama and huge upset for the two of them. But like to everybody else, it's just champagne problems. You know, it's just like, you know, first, it's like kind of saying first world problems, isn't it? Like, but for them, it's still heartbreaking. And for me, <laughs> oh, that was really good. Like, Lyrically, it really felt like a, like, like, it just, like, I can't, uh, uh, every single time she does that, like, storyline twist, I just, it's just, uh, it's just too much for me. <laughs> I'll definitely be uh, stealing that particular songwriting nugget for all of my future songs. <laughs> Whether that was the song about Katy Perry or not, I'm not sure. Like, it could have been, like, it could have been, like, describing the friendship that they had. But by the sounds of it, it seemed as if maybe it was a continuation of the, it could be a continuation of the James and Betty storyline. Or maybe like like another character seems more like they're in, in college because she mentions being at dorms and your mum's ringing in your pocket and stuff. It sounds like they're pretty young, so it might be like more like oh these characters are at college now. This is what they're going through now. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be really interested to to hear and let me know if Taylor said anything because um that's that's the other thing that um I haven't seen anything of yet. Let's go on to the next song. This is Gold Rush, song number three. All that kind of orchestra stuff in the background so. Beautiful. Oh my god. Oh. Well, this is poppier. Huh. This kind of sounds a bit 80s. Oh. Oh, key changes. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. This is so good. Oh, I love this. How did she get back into the original key? Oh. 
Oh my god. <laughs> ah, I can't cope with that. <laughs> and ah, folklore. <laughs> Is this another one about Joe? I don't know how she manages to get back into the original key. Like, what happened? <sighs> that was a little bit more of a, like, a... Uh, I'm not 100% sure what that song was about, but it was beautiful. Like, the like, what does the gold rush represent? Like, does it represent... Like, like, she was talking about people, you know, falling in love with, like, what would it be like to fall in love with me and things like that. Maybe it's... Maybe it's a... Maybe it's a comment on fame. Maybe it's a comment on, like, her and Joe's relationship. Like, like with the fame. Um, yeah, you'll have to let me know what you think it's about. Because that one was li a little bit less obvious. But, oh my god, I love... That key change in the chorus is just amazing. I don't know how she managed to do that. It comes out of nowhere and then, like, fades back into the original key without you even realising, like... It's just amazing. <laughs> like, I love that. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Right, so let's go on to the next song. Christmas song? Question mark? <laughs> Tis the damn season. Number four. <laughs> like, looking at that, um, it might be more of, like, a light-hearted song. But knowing her, she'll probably find a way to twist it and make me cry. <laughs> Tis the damn season because I'm alone. <laughs> or something. Beautiful guitar work again. Oh, what's that? <gasps> Damn. <laughs> oh my god, of course. Is this the story of a couple who have broken up just before Christmas? Oh, childhood spring. <gasps> Is this Betty and James? <laughs> Chills. Unless this is the follow up to Exile. Could be. Oh, the rogue not taking looks real good now. It's coming home for Christmas and having to pretend that they're still together. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> to leave the warmest bed I've ever known. Oh my god. This is so sad. <laughs> it's like a heartbreaking kind of story because they're having to pretend that they still, you know, call me babe for the weekend, you know? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Damn it, Taylor. What happened to the lighthearted Christmas song? <laughs> oh my God. It's that. It's that lyric, the... Leaving the warmest bed I've ever known. Oh my god. <laughs> How dare she. <laughs> to make me cry about the song four. <laughs> We've got song five coming up and, you know, I'll probably be a complete mess. <laughs> then again, I didn't cry my tis ricochet, so, you know, we'll see. Oh my god, there's like... So I've got two theories based on that first lesson. It could either be a follow-up to Exile. So we had the two people who had obviously been together for a long time, breaking up and feeling exiled by each other, um, having to like go to like maybe a Christmas family thing to go back to her parents' house and uh, and pretend that they're still together, pretend that like, you can call me babe for the weekend, tis the season. But the other side is that they di she mentioned that um, I packed my bags between the Methodist church and the school where we used to go. Um, so maybe it could be a loose follow-on from the Betty and James thing because... Um, because we know that they went to school together, you know that 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 um she switched homes uh, home rooms because of him and all that. So it could be it could be or it could be completely unrelated. <laughs> uh, I don't know how she manages to still write these like little lyrics, these little lyrics that come out of nowhere that are just so so heartbreaking in such an instant. It's like in All Too Well that was obviously full of them, and I, uh, she's just amazing. And this is the second album of the year. I can't cope. Honestly, all the songs so far have been so beautiful. Right. Okay, let's go on to the next song. So this is Tolerate It, song number five. 
Okay, it's gonna be pretty tragic. I hope you're ready. I'm not. Oh God, it already sounds sad. Oh, oh, what's this time signature? Oh my God. Heartbeat. <laughs> oh. oh my god, this is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, she's like pouring everything into this love and he just tolerates it. Oh, is it all in my head? Oh, oh my god. <laughs> the blankets of a barbed wire. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't really been able to talk much. <laughs> this is just so stunning. This is so stunning. You deserve more, huh? Oh my god. I hope this isn't about her. Otherwise we'll be coming for Joe. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that was so... Oh my god. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> oh god, okay. Wow, okay, um, so she's telling the story of this person who wakes up looking at this guy like she's so deeply in love and she'll do anything for her, him. She'll save all of her, all of her best colours for his portrait and she'll set the, the table with all the fancy stuff and, and, uh, and she'll put everything she has into it. She'll put all of her love. And he just tolerates it. It's just... But that, that lyric, the... The now I'm just begging for footnotes in your, in the, in your story, like... It's just... Like... It's just... She's like... I don't know how she does it. I don't know how she manages to, like, tell these, like, incredibly rich stories that, like, just have so much emotional depth to them time and time and time and time again she just really is amazing and that's not to say anything for the instrumentation that those the fast hi-hats in, in the background that that are kind of like it kind of feels like because hi like hi-hats at that speed are supposed to be frantic but the song isn't frantic it's 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 kind of a strange time signature but those hi-hats are almost it's almost threatening isn't it it's like in the background like like hiding it's just it's just oh my god it's just so rich and so dense and my God, wow. Honestly, that has to be one of my favorite songs I've heard from her. Is it too late to change my album of the year? <laughs> if you checked out on Tuesday, I did my song of the year. I did my best songs of the year and I've already recorded my best albums of the year. I did it at the same time and then I've, I've, I'm editing it and putting it out on Tuesday. But then she announced this and I'm like, I'm crying out loud. <laughs> You're ruining all my brands. So um, yeah, so I might have to do like a little edit saying, um, like just a little bit of bonus footage just talking about this album because like so far oh my god it's stunning and that one was just out of this world ready okay song number six I'm ready to go let's do it okay um so song number six feet heim oh, oh, oh. we love a bit of heim on this channel they really love to really utilize every instrument they have and play it in every different possible way. They're really, really creative when it comes to, yeah, like production and musicality and instrumentation. So let's see. So this is Nobody, No Crime. <laughs> Nobody Dodge. Let's go. <laughs> oh, please, sirens. He did it. Folky, isn't it? Huh. Huh. Oh, the... F Ah, uh, someone's been cheating. Right, okay. He's been cheating, but I can't prove it. Oh, <laughs> the mad woman is back, hey. I feel bad for Esty. 
The mistress moved in. Oh, sh Ah, oh, so the story's progressing now. I think, yeah, okay. So she's going to this, to the Olive Garden and having, and meeting her friend. And the friend thinks that he's cheating on her. Now Taylor thinks that he's cheated on her, but they can't prove it because they don't have the body. But I'm not going to let it go because he deserves what's coming to him. Oh my god, as if... She was with me, dude. <laughs> <sighs> oh my god hashtag ttt <laughs> oh my god she's killed him <laughs> oh my god as if <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh, she's not saying it is she <gasps> oh. oh my god so good I'd have liked a little bit more vocal from home, but I guess they were like, they were almost like the muses, weren't they? They were the people telling the story. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is so good. Oh my God. So like the first verse, they're going for coffee, they're going for food. And, 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 and the friend is like, I think he's cheating on me, um, but I can't prove it. And then the second verse is like, the narrator is then going up to the house and seeing that the mistress has moved in. She's like, I know it, but I can't quite prove it. And then she kills him <laughs> for the friend, um, but nobody can prove it. He, they, they think that they think that the girlfriend do it, did it, but they can't prove it. She thinks that I did it, but she can't prove it. But I wasn't letting up until the day he died. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's so good! <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh my god, this album so far! I can't cope. This is so good. So good. Bloody hell. Okay. Wow. That, oh my god. Like, I, the, the amount of times I've said, oh my god, is about a million. <laughs> Just, oh my god. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is called Happiness. Maybe we'll get a happy song. I doubt it. I hope not, because we know she's with Joe. But um, but then, I'm hoping that that, I'm hoping that last song was not about Taylor. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. They can't prove it. <laughs> Let's go on to song number seven. This is happiness. Doesn't sound particularly happy so far. Huh. Oh no. Huh. It sounds like she's broken up and they're dividing all their stuff off. Right. Both of them can be true. It's optimistic. Leave it all behind. It's like clean, isn't it? Things changed. <laughs> my God. It's building. Oh my God. I love that synth. Yeah. Yeah. It's turned round now. So there's happiness before. And just because we broke up doesn't mean that it wasn't there. And we can't find happiness again. The dress. It's not 2am though, is it? <laughs> Put it all behind. Move on. Yeah. It really feels like the growth from her old albums, you know? Seven years in heaven. I love that. Oh, the growth. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't met the new me yet. But I think she'd give you the forgiveness. This is so much more than I thought this song could be. Like, it's so optimistic. Oh. <laughs> I just love that. She's just grown up so much, you know? <sighs> I've got chills. I've got proper chills. Like, every single one of these songs is just so good. <laughs> like... She was right to continue writing, you know? See, like, the growth from, like, her previous albums, like, I'm not gonna be move on and be happy if I make a villain out of you, compared to, like, back in the day when that was her grieving process, was to, like, you new know, like, Dear John, where she, like, properly, like, went for it. So to, like, get to this point where... 
like I just love being able to see the personal growth in her songwriting and being and like all these years later writing a song that's like directly references you know the things that she kind of um kind of did wrong and 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 it's just such a mature breakup song because she says you know before there was this great divide there was beauty and there was happiness in our relationship but that doesn't mean that we can't have it afterwards you know it doesn't mean we can find that again those two things can exist at the same time those two things can be at the same time and like she's not in a place where she's quite over it and forgiven but because of her like more like experienced outlook she hasn't met the new me she hasn't met the new her yet but she thinks that that future taylor or future person would be able to forgive him it, that comes with su it's so much more perspective and so much more maturity than so many of our old breakup songs and i just love being able to see how she's grown <sighs> this is so good honestly i'm so moved every bloody song so this morning i had a, i woke up to a text from my swifty bestie claire and she said to me I know you don't like to know anything about albums before you listen to them, but I'll tell you one thing, and that is Dorothea is the name of Taylor's grandma. I'm telling you no more. <laughs> so the next song is song number eight, and that's Dorothea. Obviously, she's written it about her grandma, presumably. Um, I mean, she wrote one for her granddad in the war, and the last album, which was Epiphany. I'm excited to see what kind of song that she'd write for her grandma. Oh, it's <laughs> just... <laughs> Do you ever stop and think about me? <laughs> Making a lark of the misery. Love that. Tiny screens. Oh, So maybe this is a past love of hers. His perspective. Hmm. It's lovely. <laughs> oh, that's so, so good. Maybe it's the perspective of a past love looking at their phone and seeing in the tiny screen, seeing Dorothea and being like, you know, if you ever want to come back, I'm here. <laughs> a queen selling dreams, selling makeup in magazines. <laughs> Besotted. <laughs> That's so cute. This is so beautiful. Oh my God, I just love this. <laughs> This is so cute. It's really nice. It's, it's nice to have a slightly more like jolly kind of song. You know, breaks it up a bit, doesn't it? I love this like this this story that she set up. It's really beautiful. Oh, I love those little synths that they hide in the songs. They're really lovely. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, I tell you what, like the instrumentation in all of these songs and like the product, the, the production is just like top notch. It's surprising, but it, it feels so fo folky and so, you know, acoustic. But then they like work in these elements of synth that just work so well because they feel retro. They feel throwback. It feels like they're looking at a sepia photo, but they're using electronic instruments. It's just like... I love it. Oh my god. So that story, like, maybe it's like an an old ex of her grandma's or something, because it seems like this person is like reminiscing about about the days when they about when when they used to like when they were young together and when they used to like when they, they knew each other really well and like all I can see of you now is looking through the tiny screen. Maybe they're looking maybe they found Dorothea on Facebook and they're looking back and just reminiscing about all the beautiful times they had together. And you get tired of your normal life, you'll always know me. And it's, it's just this beautiful, like, love song. It, it might not even be romantic love. Maybe she was inspired by, like, a story her nan told her. Maybe an old friend got back in contact. Um, and maybe she wrote a song from that perspective. That's what it sounds like to me. Let me know what you think. Um, and let me know what she said about it. Oh, it's just... Yeah. She's just so good! There are moments in this that are even higher than folklore, I'd say. I don't want to say... I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to like, rank all of Taylor's albums at some point. But, like... So far, this is like one of her best ever. So next is is Coney Island feat The National. So National The National's Aaron Dessner was um, a key co-writer for Taylor on on folklore and presumably on this as well. So she's managed to convince him to join in on a, on an actual feature. Um, so that's really good. And it's Coney Island. Coney Island is that is that like a theme park or something? Let me know what Coney Island is. I just love all these like 
they they're not afraid to make something really quiet and in the background even though it's like beautiful but it just adds all these beautiful layers of depth to the production it's stunning absolutely stunning huh. looking for you but you're right here breaking my soul in two delicate there's a disconnect between her and this other person mm. oh Hello. So there's like some kind of disconnect between the two of them. It's like they've led each other on. It's like these petty things that like cause arguments that just prove that they're disconnected, you know. Did I paint your bluest skies the dark grey? Got chills again. It's like being in like the, like what should be a really happy place, but Feeling sadness, it's that juxtaposition, isn't it? The sun's obviously going down on their relationship and they can't kind of keep each other warm anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> That's another beautiful one. I love the imagery of, and I love the juxtaposition. It's like that thing where she says, I'm looking for you, even though you're right next to me um, and I can't relate to you, then who am I related to? You know, they should be in a better place. They should be happier. They should be like reflecting all of the, the excitement and the lights of Coney Island around them. But instead, they both feel cold and they both feel sad and they both feel disconnected from one another. Um, and as the sun goes down, you know, they can't keep each other warm anymore because it's getting colder and colder and colder. Right, so let's go on to song number 10. This is Ivy. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Huh. Oh. <laughs> I can't stop you putting ropes in my dreamland. Oh. I think this might be another song about Joe. You put roots in my dreamland. And now I'm covered in ivy, and you. Mm. Huh, wonder what that's referring to. Sounds a little bit more like, um, goes back to kind of that country thing. Hmm. Uh, maybe it's another story of cheating. Ah, uh, right. Maybe it's not about Joe. They've been caught, or maybe they're going to be caught. Ha. Huh. Oh, so it's people who are cheating, I think. And maybe similar to August. So this character seems to be married, but but they can't help but this per this other person they've met, and that they're, they're in too deep, you know? Oh. It's a goddamn blaze in the dark. I love that. I love it. I love it. What else am I going to say? It's just so good. Yeah, it's 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 these. She goes into these perspectives and tells their story with much more like positive. It's kind of similar to like illicit affairs, where she's very sympathetic of people who are seem to be doing maybe wrong things. I like that. I really like that though. That's nice. Yeah. So that was like a little bit more of a low key one. Like the the thing is that the so that one has the same uh, rhythmic timing of the of the guitar as um, green was the colour of the, da, da, the invisible string. So maybe maybe there's a link to that. I'm not sure. But like story wise, it seems much more like a perspective. Like to me, it seems like she was having this like relationship with this person. She mentions like a husband, you know, um, you know, they don't belong together, but somehow they do because like she couldn't help like his roots like taking hold and in, in her dreamland and and growing over the stone cottage and and now she's covered like ivy you know it's 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 kind of like this idea that that it wasn't meant to happen but it it did and and now she's in too deep you know um and then cuz then the middle eight talks about like getting caught and like running away and things like that so um yeah interest yeah i like it it's it's she's kind of again like telling this kind of perspective um of like somebody who's doing something bad you know having an affair or you know whatever but like telling it with a much more sympathetic ear with this and folklore she's kind of shining a light on on the, the other person it's the same in like august but let me know let me know in the comments what you think it's about right let's go on to song number 11 this is cowboy like me yeehaw <laughs> 
They pay for it, so it's right. She's found a kindred spirit. Could be the way for it, and I know I pay for it. She's kind of admitting that she's kind of a bit of a swindler, a bit of a bandit, but she's met a kindred spirit. Love it. It's kind of really rich and mellow, isn't it? Beautiful guitar. <laughs> 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 She's some sort of like honeypot then. And now she's locked it down with him. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you hang from my lips. So they've locked it down, yeah. So it's like skipped ahead in the story, isn't it? She's married this kindred spirit. I love that I'm Never Gonna Love Again is like kind of could be considered a, a sad lyric, but. If you're in in love and still loving, it's kind of this kind of feeling that they're gonna love forever, you know. Yeah, that's sweet. I like that. Kind of tells the story of these two kind of slightly dubious characters meeting each other and coming together, um, and kind of finding this kind of kindred spirit that they never thought they'd find. And then like the story progresses, and um, by the end they've uh, they've married and they've locked it down, and they're gonna be together forever. Right, let's go on to song number 12. This is Long Story Short. Ooh, ha, huh. oh, okay. Huh. What can it tell you high heels break? Ha <laughs> ha, uh, yeah. She's looking back and just thinking, you know, is she telling somebody about the past exes, because now now she's all about, I'm all about you now. <gasps> I must look better in the rear view, oh my god. Huh. That's, that's a reference, isn't it? That must be a reference to the Red Era. I fell from the pedestal right down the rabbit hole. Huh. Long story short, it was the wrong guy. Yeah, maybe this is her telling Joe about their old relationships. Yeah, she's moved on. Yeah, oh, this is really the ultimate growth, isn't it? No keeping score. <gasps> Evermore, there it is. Oh my God. Oh. oh, oh my God, there's so many details in this song. I love this, oh my God. This is like the ultimate kind of growth, isn't it? Because now I'm all about you. I love it! Uh, it's like it doesn't matter anymore. I survived. Oh my god. Oh, I loved that. I think that that really is a song that like has so many layers of meaning. Please, 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 please comment all those little lyrics because I couldn't quite catch all of them. The one I did catch and the one that makes me think it might be about like looking back at Jake Gyllenhaal and that particular romance was I think actually now I think I looked better in the rear view because there was the moment in red where he almost ran the red because you were looking over at me um which suggests that like maybe it's that direct comparison maybe thinking this relationship would have been better if I were in the back seat and you were actually looking where you were going and looking at your mirrors rather than looking over at me in the front seat it's that it's that kind of perspective looking back at that relationship and thinking I now now I have perspective now I've grown that relationship's changed because that is what the whole story the whole song seems to be about long story short it was a bad time but now, now I'm all about you. And it's like, it, it's, it's, oh my God, I can't get my words out. <laughs> it's, it's kind of looking back at her past relationships and looking back at like how it was like, they were fated not to work. But it kind of feels like it's kind of set up like her talking to Joe. Maybe they decided to have that conversation about their exes. And maybe she was like, actually, you know, that doesn't mean that much to me anymore. Long story short, I'm gonna sum it up because now I'm all about you because now I've moved on and now it doesn't mean, it doesn't hold that much weight in my heart anymore. Oh my God, so good. And yeah, please, 
please comment below if you noticed anything else. I'd love to like really dig into these songs. Right, let's go on to song number 13, Unlucky This Mom. This is Marjorie. I love all the all the production in this this album. So kind, you forget to be clever. Huh. So clever, you forget to be kind. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Talking to me now. Huh. Didn't stay dead. What died didn't stay dead? You're alive in my head. You forget your power. Huh. It's lessons learned, isn't it? You know? Yeah. I love those, like, both sides of the coin. That's amazing. Maybe someone's passed away and these are the things that she's been taught by them. And she's kind of looking back at kind of thinking, you know, this is what I learned from you and you're never really dead, you know, because you taught me all this. Your legacy lives on, you know? Oh, well. Oh, your closet some black lock, black lock dreams. Oh my god. <laughs> I wonder who's who passed away. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, I know better, but I can still feel you. Oh my god. What a beautiful way to sing about someone who's passed away. Wow. Oh my god. It's just... <laughs> it's so, like, beautiful. It's so beautiful. Like, like, in the way that she's kind of... She's saying, you know, you'll never truly be dead because of the things that you taught me and the things that you passed on. And like, I wish I'd like, I wish I'd captured every single little moment of you that I possibly could, like every single grocery store receipt. And because now you're not here, I still have everything you taught me. Like starts off with these like lessons that she's learned. Don't be so kind that you're letting yourself go, that, that you're not like standing up for yourself, but don't stand up for yourself so much that you're not like, it's that, you know, that wisdom that she's taken from this person who's obviously passed away but she's still <laughs> but she's still remembering you know she's still remembering that stuff that she taught her and, and like and you know when someone dies they're never truly dead because you still live on in people's memories you know I can't get over how brilliant how brilliant she is she's just such an incredible songwriter and every single thing I hear from her she just gets better and better and better amazing wow Let's go on to song number 14. This is Closure. Whoa. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It's like the storm has been suppressed. Huh. That's the pain, isn't it? That drum. The letter. Huh. Maybe she got a letter from back from John. Right, so someone else is trying to get closure. So she's got this letter from somebody who's obviously looking for closure from his perspective. That drum is so interesting. So harsh. But I love it. Yeah. It's fake and it's unnecessary. You, like, you think it's closure, but we're already way past it. You already put an ocean between us. In not admitting that she doesn't need her closure, she's proving her own self-worth, you know? That's a really interesting perspective. I wasn't really expecting a song that was like, I don't need your closure, you know? I think that um, I was expecting something a little bit more like Clean. Um, actually, the, the the drum in that was actually quite a little bit similar to Clean. Maybe it's a little bit of a throwback. I loved the drums in that. I wonder if they represented like his kind of negative energy coming back and kind of invading her positive mind space where she is. You know, this letter has arrived and... And it's obviously saying like, sorry, sorry. And it's obviously like him trying to like force 
clo- his own closure and she's kind of like actually you've just kind of like reminded me of all the all the, the deep cut and and how it cut right to the bones no you've reminded me of, the, of all the darkness and actually i was already past it i don't need your closure the production of this album i'd say is better than folklore in a way folklore had some really brilliant moments but this one really seems to like tie in like some really surprising drums and some surprising like electronic instruments to kind of fuse into this like dreamlike folky like atmosphere it's really really masterfully done absolutely inspiring i love it oh honestly this is just so incredible right are you ready this is the final song of the album i don't know i'm ready for it to be over <laughs> this is evermore feet bon Iver. this is the title track and it's the final track so yeah i'm excited to to see what hear what this song's gonna be let's go seems very measured and paced doesn't it like settled i think that's what it's gonna be you know (laughs) oh interesting oh this is beautiful her voice sounds so stunning Huh. Oh, that's not what I expected. This pain would be forevermore. Maybe it's kind of just accepting that grief, grief doesn't ever leave you. She's feeling unmoored. She's feeling unsettled. She's kind of exploring, trying to find what happened, you know? It's kind of like ex- accepting that, that some pains will stick with you forever, but that's not necessarily tragic, you know? Oh. <gasps> Oh, it's like a bump in the road, you know. The shipwreck, huh? That keeps on coming back, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I love Boniver's section. <sighs> wow. <sighs> so surprising. It's like a moment where it's like all tumultuous, you know? And then she catches her breath again. It wouldn't be forevermore. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) Wow. Oh my god. In that last moment, she just turned it all around. And she said... You know, she's kind of, she's lost. She's like, she's trying to catch her breath, but she's wandering through the woods in the cold. She's going to catch her death staring out the window. And and she has this feeling that, like, the pain is going to last forever. But in that middle age, like, it just all completely flips. Bonnie Ver comes in with this beautiful vocal and they start, and it kind of becomes a lot more frantic. But then after that frantic thing, she catches her breath and she goes back and she realises that the pain won't be forevermore. She'll get past it and she'll be able to move on. It's like a moment of feeling lost, a moment of feeling unmoored, you know, like, you know, maybe like, and it's like in that moment, it is all encompassing, isn't it? Like you kind of like you like you have these moments where you feel, feel like you're completely like emotionally like unmoored and, and you don't know what you're doing and you're lost. But afterwards, you look back and you kind of think like, how could I feel like that was going to be forever? Because now, like, I know that I can get past it. I'm more mature than that. I've learned more than that. And I and I know that this pain won't be forever more. Having listened to like so much of Taylor's stuff now, I feel like I could appreciate that like even more. Then I did Folklore. My first listen of Folklore was like, you know, a real moment for me. But honestly, that that was just so incredible. It's so incredible. On first listen, you know, on first listen. This is the thing is that like these songs that she's writing are so deep and so intricate. I'm going to listen to them again and again and again and again. It's like the it's like all, like on Folklore, how I spoke about like the last great American dynasty, how like the more I listened to it, the more I loved it. And like, I feel like my first impression of like all of these songs is bit is is like been one of amazement and beauty and wonder and I love them and like <laughs> and like I feel like the next like the more I listen to them they're gonna be even even more even better. 
This might this might actually rank higher than folklore for me. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Who knew she had it in her after doing a whole album to then write another whole album and for it to be so good. It's just like it's crazy. It's just crazy. So let's kind of talk about the whole album and story, you know. I think that it seems to be that like evermore, you know, it's 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 like what is she taking on forever? What things has she learned from her life? What has she taken on from the people who have left her? What has she taken from her relationships in the past? What has she taken from her perspective in the industry? What has she taken on from her life so far that she's going to take with her forever? You know, that's it really feels like so reflective. And so it's like folklore was 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 the tales and evermore is is how what she ta what is she taking from those tales you know um and how are they going to benefit her for the rest of her life i mean obviously like i mean obviously i know that not all the songs were from taylor's like from her perspective but like i think that like in terms of her place writing in terms of her mental state writing this i do think that it's she's written all these stories almost as like a way to kind of reinforce these things that she's learned and every single song is a moment in which she's learned something and moved on and become a better person it just feels like an absolute masterpiece the songwriting on display there is just absolutely masterful the production and the instrumentation is just incredible it's 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 even more kind of experimental like there are moments where you have like drums on like e like panned to either side that kind of feel like they're kind of closing in on you there's these moments where like the drums completely don't match the vibe of the rest of the music and they kind of like jump out over the top but it kind of feels like they have a narrative purpose there's like so many moments of like things that sound so unexpected but they fit it's just so good honestly oh I'm going to be going on about this album for years. I feel like it's one of those things where, like, in her learning about her life, it kind of really resonates with me emotionally. It makes me think, you know, what have I learned from the people who have, like, passed away? And what have I learned from my past relationships? And who am I now? It's She's writing from different perspectives and inspiring me to think from a different perspective. So, I guess that's it. I just... I'm just so excited to listen to that album a million more times and to listen to it in reference to maybe I'll listen to it back to back with folklore and try and like pull apart like more pieces, you know. Um, but let me know what you think, um, of course. Let, let me know um, your breakdown of the lyrics in the comments. And of course, any more Taylor... Uh, Taylor related information that I don't know context you know let me know in the comments I, I mean I don't really need to ask you do I because I know you're going to do it <laughs> of course if you haven't subscribed already then please click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications and of course like the video um as well because that gives it like a good boost in the algorithm this week the song of the week I've chosen is from Emily Sande she's one of these people who can like not only can write a song that's heartbreaking and intimate but she performs it in a way that completely matches the the depth of her lyric this song is close and intimate so make sure to check it out I'll put the link in the description thank you so much for tuning in I've been Dan I'll see you again soon bye